Cut Quest 2012 with Jay Scruggs. We're doing a drying demo here at the Groomer to Groomer booth. And what we're doing is Jay showing how to dry coat even a dog with show coat. And what he's doing is using a force dryer. He's using a K92 um, dryer from Electric Cleaner Company. And he's going over the dog now and just basically getting in the hair, getting a lot of the excess water off. Working his way totally around the dog to where that he gets the entire dog dry at the same time. Um, he's just going to go from one spot to the other, working his way around, um, just blowing, blowing the water off. And then as he goes, he'll slow down and then get in there and straighten the coat, letting the dryer do the work for him. And when you're drying a coat like this, you want to stay about as far away from the dog as the coat is, the, as the length of the coat where you're working at. So depending on where he's at is how close or how far away he will be from the coat. Um, and like I said, you want to move around your dog, always getting around and uh, drying the complete dog at the same time. So. The, the, the same goes true when you're grooming. If you work in a methodical manner, you will speed your time up. And by working in a methodical manner while you're drying the dog, you'll also speed up your time. Same thing with bathing. Um, when you, your dog comes in, and, and, and my routine is I do nails, and I do ears, and then I'll do my clipper work or sanitaries, and then if the dog needs to be roughed in, I do that, and then I go to the tub. But I do the same routine on every dog so to make sure that I don't miss anything. Some of the most successful people in the world um, that have, um, in, in, um, like Wayne, Wayne Lucas, who is one of the top racehorse, thoroughbred racehorse trainers, he says he even, um, down to how he, shape, he rakes the, the shed row in his barns is the same way. That way he knows if anybody's been in his barn in the morning when he comes in. Um, he knows if there's been any uh, critters in there, any varmints, um, and so on and so forth. So everything we do, if we do it in a methodical manner, do have a routine to where we do the same thing. And you can see Jay's now worked around to the opposite side of this dog, to the other end, working on the rosettes, going down the leg to the back pom-poms now and he's using a towel and what he, the reason he's doing that is he'll use the towel to um, to catch the water as it blows off the dog so that you're not blowing it into the other leg or it's not getting on your table and that kind of stuff. I even like to leave a towel on the table while I'm drying the dog so that whatever you know especially if it's a cocker or something like that then it'll just start soaking that water up out of the feet. Always letting your equipment do your work for you. You can see now he's slowing down a little bit and watching that coat, making sure that every strand of hair is straight. So he's back where he started from, going over every inch of the dog, and he's watching the coat. You know, you have to watch the skin, watch the coat. Um, the reason you want to watch is you want to make sure that you don't have any wrinkles. The, the whole thing of getting a nice plush finish on a poodle is to make sure that he is dried correctly and he's dried straight and he is completely dry. I mean bone dry like he was before you ever put him into the tub because if you don't that hair is going to kink up and you're never going to get that plush finish and by drying like this you'll find out that then your grooming time will uh, go faster and your grooming your groom will last longer. The dogs that are hand dried and completely straight, they're clean, clean, clean to where they squeak, those grooms will last longer than if you cage dry your dogs. So it's very important. Uh, the other thing is, is the skin is the largest organ on the dog's body, or in the dog's body, on the dog's body, however you want to say that. But it's, um, it tells you a lot about the dog, about the health of that dog. And if you have a dog that's you've been grooming once uh, ever 
once a month or once every six weeks for a long time, and he's always came in. He's been in great shape. And then all of a sudden he comes in and he's matted. You might want to refer them to the vet and get his uh, and have them check him out because a lot of times, um, just like us, what we eat and uh, our environment affects how healthy we are. So you can see now he's, he's working in the jacket, going a little bit slower all the time to get everything straight and he's watching the skin looking um, when I dry I want to make if there's any lumps or bumps or irritations or rashes or bug bites or anything you want to alert your your customer to that whether it's something they just need to keep an eye on or whether you think that it's necessary for them to see the vet because we see more of their skin than they than the owners ever do ever do because you know they know they don't have a four dryer a lot of times I'm mobile and I may call my customers into the truck and say, hey, I need to show you this because I don't think you're going to find it in this coat. And so they'll come out to the truck and I'll use the dryer to find that. You know, and even underneath, all that coat too still has to be dry. It has to be straight. It has to be completely dry. And, you know, his clipper work's going to be so much easier on this dog because even the short stuff has been, been dried straight. Make sure to get in behind those elbows. And it's uh, one place that's really tricky is right below that pad um, that's up on the leg on your poodles. Um, it's easy to miss that. So be sure to get all the way to the back of the pads. Make sure everything is straight, straight, straight. There is no compromise when it comes to bathing and drying a dog correctly. The, you can't rush it. Um, there's, there's, there's a couple of ways to, to dry it faster by using your using a chamois or using a towel to catch the water. But the you got to do the work, and uh, I can't stress enough how important it is to get the dog bathed and dried completely. Now he's using a canine dryer. They have a canine two. They have a canine three. And um, I've used these dryers, and, and I absolutely have loved them. They do a great job. Um, and what he can do, too, is you, you notice he has the, the nozzle that came on that dryer. And then in my truck, I have taken a nozzle like that and cut it in two to where that it's half the length and it has a wider hose. So then I would take it um, as I get around the dog and he starts to get more dry, I'll use the bigger nozzle and then at that very end take the nozzle off completely and use the big part of the dryer and go closer to the dog so that you can, um, it will kind of, it's almost like using a fluff dryer. I very rarely anymore use anything other than the force dryer to dry my dogs because it has a variable speed on it or it has a two speed and you can slow it down and use whatever the dog can handle. So a good force dryer is a great investment to have. Um, and blow drying the dogs, hand drying them, you're going to get your better finish. And you can see even he's, you know, he'll be doing her, um, her top knot and neck hair as long as it is. She'll be, he'll be using that same dryer to dry the ear hair and the, the neck hair on this dog. It, and what happens is you just have to watch the coat and if it starts to whip around each other, starts to tangle, then you need to go further away. Increase the distance between the end of the nozzle and the dog's skin. But always watching what you're doing to make sure that you're not creating a, a problem. Now he's going to go back and he's going to start working probably up into the back in a minute. He's, he's going to go back to his tail again working around the dog completely making sure that she's bone dry. It's, it's just such a it's so much easier to do this instead of trying to fight with a dog that's you, that you've put in the cage and let it dry 
and then you have to try to comb those mat the tangles out and the curl out. You're not going to get it completely straight, and it's not going to last. It's kind of like if you went to bed with a wet head and you got up the next morning and tried to fix your hair, um, it's not going to be... Uh, it's going to be a nightmare to try to fix it because you're not going to get those dents and wrinkles out of it that uh, you would have gotten out had you dried it completely from start to finish. Same thing with our dogs. And people feel like they get a lot better value for their money if their grooms last longer. So you make the customer happier. You look better, uh, more professional, that you do a better job because your grooms last longer. Um, I just took on a new customer the other day, and it was a full-coated, older Lhasa. And because of the way that I dry the dog, um, he said the groom lasts for two or three weeks, the dog looked good. And whoever had done it before, he said, you know, after three days, it looked like it needed to be groomed again. So it's real important. Um, it's great for your business to dry the dogs. Um, you're being more thorough. You're seeing more of the dog to where you can alert the, the customer to um, health issues, skin issues that are going on um, with the dog. It's just a, we find that it's a better, better way to do business. Um, the only time that you would not want to use the force dryers on the dogs would be if you have an old dog or a young dog that has um, that's very nervous or fractious. Uh, if it's an old dog, a lot of times old dogs will, um, they'll, my, my old dog, he's 14, he's a miniature poodle, and some days I can dry him and he does just fine, and other days I'll dry him and he may go into, he'll just bark and carry on and kind of, it, it almost acts like a seizure, but it's not a seizure, he just, he just barks and, and and um, even though I use a happy hoodie on him and put cotton in his ears, and then other times he doesn't do it at all. In just a few minutes, then he'll stop, and then um, we'll continue on, and, and he's fine. But a lot of the older dogs, if it's not a poodle, then you can, you know, maybe it would be better to cage dry them or use a, a fluff dryer on them. But our technology has come a long way in the equipment, I can't imagine that years ago that you would have to completely dry this dog with um, with nothing but a um, with nothing but a, a fluff dryer. So Jay's going to use some spritz on this dog. Um, she's getting drier, but he's going to use some um, a coat conditioning spray uh, to help with the static, and it just kind of seals the hair and keeps it uh, cleaner longer. It, it gives it a little bit of a slicky feeling to where the comb will go through it easier. Yeah, he's saying that he he's using the canine one. It's just a single speed dryer. If, he'd been, if he was using a canine two, he'd already be done by now. And um, but even if you use the smaller dryers, it's still a lot faster than if you were using um, just a, a fluff dryer or, or um, letting them cage dry. So in the, in the if, in, you know, probably 30 minutes, he'd have this dog bone dry with a canine two or a canine three. And you can see he's drying that long hair on the ears the same way. He's moving back away from the dog so that he's not going to whip it. And then he can just hold the dog's ear. The ear canal was closed there to where that he's able to dry it and not get any air in the dog's ear. And he's using his hands to feel if there's any damp spots. And that's kind of a tough one because sometimes you'll think you got the dog completely dry because your hands get warm. And, um, but if you take your hands off the dog for a few minutes and then go back or, you know, have an assistant feel because uh, sometimes it's, it's hard to, or it's easy to miss some spots if you're not real careful and not real methodical. And a lot of times if you look at the coat and it's, you're seeing uh, little kinks down towards the skin, then that area is probably not real good and dry.
He's just going back over. Now you can see he's going really, really slow, and he's just ironing that coat. See how slow he's going now compared to what he was to begin with? Slowing down, ironing the coat. You got to think straight, 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 and bone dry. And everybody has their own techniques that they use and stuff. Jay's done a lot of poodles over the years and uh, won a lot of competitions, uh, won um, in, in the United States and abroad. Um, so sometimes change is hard, but sometimes it's the, for the better, and it never hurts to try something new. So if you're not using a, um, a force dryer in your shop, this is something that you might want to look into. It's a really good dog. She's obviously a show dog. She's been dried hundreds of times probably. And with that kind of coat, she gets a bath, I'd say, once a week or so. But the thing about it is is that um, when you start out with a dog, you want to start out slow. If I have puppies, I want to always start at the back end of the dog uh, with the, the bigger nozzles so where it's not quite as loud. If you have the variable speed, obviously start it out on low and then work your way forward. But they can all learn. Uh, I have some dogs that have been, um, they hate to have their head dried, but with the use of the cotton balls and the ears and the happy hoodie, um, now he, he'll stand and I just have to be very careful around his head and go slow and reassure him and he's, he's fine. You can see there how he's holding that ear completely closed so that he doesn't get air in it. He's working back up into the neck hair. And it's really, it's a lot more time efficient to dry the dogs like this because if you get them good and dry, you get them straight, they're clean, 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 then um, your whole, the rest of your grooming process is going to go a whole lot faster. So you, you can tell he's watching the coat, he's watching the skin. And it's okay for him to sit down. I mean, I, I have a lot of dogs, I let them lay down on the table, roll them over on their side, the, especially dogs like my full-coated cockers, it, and let them lay down and take a load off for a while and let them relax and it's a whole lot easier to get the underneath side of them dry uh, or for this dog just got to get the rest of her head and her neck hair good and dry so just let her sit down and relax there's nothing wrong with letting them sit down whatever's comfortable for them he's looking for any tangles that might be in there There's a lot of these dryers out on the market. Um, you can find whatever works for you. Um, there's um, I think uh, a big array of them are in um, um, you can check them out in Pet Edge magazine. They have a breakdown of what each dryer is and how many um, as you can see, Dre's trying now to take the nozzle off to, to finish drying this dog and, um, and do the, the fluff work.
So see now he's got the, the bigger nozzle and he can go down closer to the skin or he can use a, the, the slicker brush and brush as he goes, doing like you would if you had a fluff dryer. Even the short hair, it's gonna be clippered off. He wants to go on and get that nice and straight so that it can, um, it'll be easier for the clipper to go through. And now you can see he's holding it under his arm, using it just like a, a stand dryer. He's doing all his short work first, looks like, and then he'll go back into fluff drying the rest of the dog. Now, he was using a, a slicker brush, and now he's going to a pen brush. The pen brush is a, uh, a longer tooth comb or brush, and it's, it's really good. Uh, I used to never use a pen brush, and now I use it on ears when I first start on them to go through them first. And then um, and on this dog's back coat, because the hair is so long, he can go through that and not break the coat off and not rip out any more dead undercoat than he needs to. So your pen brushes is, are really good to have for dogs that have a little bit longer coat or go through long ears. We all have those dogs that the customers want the ears to be really long. And so, um, and most of the time when they come back in, they're, they're not in great shape. So it's really good to go through them with a pen brush before you go through with a slicker brush because it's a coarser tool and it's a little gentler. but it'll break the hair up and separate it to where that then when you do go back through it with the um, with a slicker brush or a comb, then it's already in pretty good shape. She's a happy girl. So he's just working his way around her again, just like he did before. Always working, always moving. You don't want to dry one section at a time. You want to dry, get the entire dog dry at the same time. So now we're going to go over and see what Jay has to say. Okay, so basically at this point, she's like 98% dry with the stand dryer. I mean, with the force dryer. So now I would take her and I'd um, get a stand dryer and basically fluff the rest of the coat out using some heat. So I'd mist it down a little bit um, and lay her down and really get her brushed out good. The reason I use a slicker brush in this area, I just wanted to fluff up the legs where she's going to do the clipper work. So. Um, that helps it stand up some and then um, we would pin brush all of this because she's got a little breakage in this area and she's got some little tangles so we got to be real careful in that area but I just want to show how fast you can use a high velocity dryer on a coat like this
bed last night at like 9 o'clock. Yeah. Where'd y'all go? Just to eat and uh, like right in Wilmington. We got this, Megan. We got this. I can stand around and hold your dryer for you, yeah. It's just like the old days. <laughs> A lot easier on your arm and your neck, isn't it? I had a stand dryer in my truck for a while, and it was, but it just kind of... Yeah, I was tripping all over my Yeah, well, I had the one that attaches to the table. <clears throat> right. And that was really nice. <clears throat> and it was great when you needed it, but... It was in the way when you didn't? Yeah.
how they still produce a lot of code underneath here, and if you don't get a lot of this dead stuff out, you'll never be able to get a comb through it. Back in the old days, they would say you never use a slicker brush above the shoulder blade on a show coat. They used to say that. That's before they we had the equipment that we have now and the different mm -hmm. textures of Yeah, and this was not harsh at all. I mean, it's just getting the really fuzzy stuff that's underneath here. And even though he's brushing this dog very thoroughly, he's not brushing the skin. He brushes, he touches the skin and then brushes away. And that's what keeps you from brush burning a dog. What he's using now is he spritzed this dog with a little bit of Crown Royal Formula 3. It's, uh, it's called Mag Magic Touch Grooming Spray. And uh, it actually, it'll kind of coat the hair. It'll cut down on your static. Um, you can use a lot of different things. Um, you can even take a bottle of water and put a couple of drops of uh, conditioner in it. That'll make a big difference as well with the static and everything and help get a comb through it better. Um, I really like this stuff because I love the way it smells. I call it my groomer therapy. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Got this? You got that? All right. You got another comb, Megan? Another comb? Yeah. There's her eyes. Huh? Megan, do you know what time it is? Oh, I have to go do a seminar. Oh, you should probably do that. I have to go now. Bye. <laughs> so basically, I'm just taking the comb and I'm going, making sure I get all the way down to the skin and get everything brushed out, combed out, so we get a nice fluff on the dog. start our finish work on it. Making sure there are no mats. I just take my comb right down to the skin and fluff it up so she's tangle free. Anything you didn't get with the brush you should be able to get it with the comb. All this little fuzzy dead stuff, it all needs to come out. And I just spritz as I go. I don't spritz the whole dog and then comb. Kind of spritz as I go. Just a real light mist with this Crown Royal, and it'll make the comb slide through this coat a lot easier. Make sure you get we knew we had some armpit mats so we want to make sure we get in there no mats in the armpit Same thing on this side, hold the armpit forward. Make sure you comb all this all the way from one side of the chest to the other.
It's this. And I want to make sure I comb both ways, so make sure there's not any little snarls or snags in this coat. And I know if I can get a, coat, a comb through this going both ways, then everything, when I go to do my spray up, everything should be able to fluff up nice and neat, and I'll be able to bring all of this up into the top knot. Then we had some little tangles on the ears, so I want to make sure I get all around the ear leather really well. Making sure none of those tangles are still in that coat. And we fluff everything up, she's ready to be trimmed.